Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome you to our worship service today. We're very glad to have you with us. If you are a guest or a visitor, please don't forget to sign our guest register. Uh, we have a notice up here about the Christmas Eve service that's going to be coming up. The three o'clock service, that is the one that has the sign-up sheet at this time. The 4.30 service, we're going to fill up with as many of the people that are participating first. And after we know how many are in from family members, then we'll open it up to the congregation, but it's all limited seating. And um, once we hit that limit of somewhere between 45 and 50, it's basement seating after that. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 355. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. We pray, God, our refuge and strength, have mercy on your church as we come in prayer before you. Answer us not in judgment on our sins, but in peace and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson is recorded in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, and then verses 19 through 26. The people of Israel acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah from the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory now to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him praise. Now tell me what you did. Do not conceal it from me. Achan answered Joshua, It is true. I am the one who has sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I did. Among the plunder I saw an expensive Mesopotamian robe a fine one, and two hundred shekels of silver, and one wedge of gold. It weighed fifty shekels. I coveted them, and I took them. Now they are hidden in the ground inside my tent, and the silver is underneath it. So Joshua sent agents. They ran to the tent, and there it was. The robe was, hit, the robe was hidden in the tent, and the silver was underneath it. They took them from the middle of the tent and brought them to Joshua, to all the people of Israel, where they poured them out before the Lord. Then Joshua took Achan, son of Zerah, and the silver, the garment, and the wedge of gold, as well as Achan's sons and his daughters, his ox, his donkey, and his flock, his tent, and everything that belonged to him. So all Israel led by Joshua, brought them up to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you brought disaster on, on us? The Lord will bring disaster on you this day. Then all the people stoned Achan to death. They also burned him and them with fire, and they pelted them with stones. They erected a large heap of stones over Achan, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from the heat of his anger. For that reason, the name of the, that place is called the Valley of Achor to this day. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. We'll continue now with the responsive psalm, Psalm 146. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes. Or anyone else. Blessed is he whose hope is in the Lord his God. The maker of heaven and earth. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord watches over the outcast. And sustains the fatherless and the widow. The Lord remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. Who 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The epistle lesson for this morning is written by John in his first epistle, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, boasting about material possessions, is not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Here ends our epistle lesson. Our seasonal response. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Hallelujah. Please stand for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 18, verses 18 through 27. A certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to, to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one. God, you know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. I have kept all these since I was a child, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the ruler heard these words, he became very sad because he was very rich. When Jesus saw that the man became very sad, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard this said, Who then can be saved? He replied, What is impossible for people is possible for God. Here ends our gospel lesson. You may be seated for our next hymn. It is hymn number 477.
you stand? The word of God that we are going to focus our attention on today is recorded in the epistle lesson, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. A very short, short section, so I will reread it. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, boasting about material possessions, is not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Please be seated. These are unusual times. The year 2020 is going to be remembered for all the bad things and none of the good things that happened in it. And it makes us kind of wonder, as I put up on the, up on the wall, what in the world is going on? Pandemic, fires, hurricanes, civil unrest throughout the country, all kinds of different events that are going on. And it's not just in the United States, but it's throughout the world. And as we think of all of these signs of the end times, God wants us to make sure that we are focused on not the world, but on Jesus. And so the two hymns that we've sung so far, Take the World But Give Me Jesus and What Is the World to Me, certainly fit in very well with everything that John was writing in his first epistle. And he gets right to the point, very straightforward, very clear, a lot of negative warnings that are in here starts out with, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And that's probably one of the strongest warnings that, that can be given in the Bible is to really let us know that there's a clear difference between what the world has to offer and what Jesus has to offer. And Jesus wants to reassure us time and time again that every one of the things that the world offers, Jesus can counter. He can raise the stakes. He can promise greater and better blessings to us because he knows that we have an eternity that we can be spending with God and that is going to be perfect. That is going to be the best possible. And all the things of this world will soon be forgotten. But you and I live in the world. I mean, we're here in the world. We're wearing our masks. We're social distancing. Something that hasn't been done since 1919, 1920. The pandemic of just over a little of a century ago, the very same things that we're going through was the flu, and it was deadly. And we continue to get flu shots every year to try to protect us from that, and we build up immunity so that we can get through the flu when it does strike. But now we've got a new one, and this this. Um, virus is going to be defeated at some point, at least slowed down, uh, gotten under control, but we still have to be patient for that. And in doing so, we've got to put our trust in the Lord that he will be there to provide us the means to be protected and to be safe. And yet he still wants to remind us we already are protected and we are safe from the world, from sin, from death, and from the devil itself. God wants us to be positive to know 
that whenever our end comes, with whatever means that it might possibly take, we've got a place that's waiting for us that's better than everything in the world because we will be filled with the love of the Father that the Holy Spirit has already placed in us through holy baptism, through the Word of God, strengthened through holy communion, all to constantly remind us we're in God's hands. And in God's hands, we are in the safest place possible. While we know that we are safe eternally, God also wants to keep us safe while we're here because we've got work to do for him while we're here in this world. And if we're going to carry out that work, some things change. We have to adjust, we have to adapt, and we're seeing that throughout our country as a lot of changes are taking place as the pandemic really starts to get more and more out of control. But God still is. The other things that John tells us about in this world are other temptations, other distractions, other problems that we have to face every day, the lust of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, boasting about material, material possessions. Our world operates on the premise that sex sells. And they will use all kinds of images and wording and anything that they can to get the attention of the lust of the flesh and the desire of the eyes to attract to their products. And sometimes those products are extremely dangerous. Other times, it's just a marketing tool. But God wants us to be aware of all of these things and to constantly be prepared and to know we have to evaluate everything in this world on its own merits, not just on fancy or sneaky advertising, but on its own merits. Is it good? Is it beneficial? Does it meet a purpose that we need in our lives? Or is it something that really is above and beyond what we should really be striving for and trying to get? Material possessions gets into that category. Our finances can change in a very, very short time. You watch the stock market. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up based on some of the information that they get that they think things are going to be positive and rosy and then it goes down because on the next day they've got some other news and it's something that people do speculate on. We probably all have some investments that are in that and we pray that they would you know, certainly always continue to rise because they're meant for our uh, retirement and for our welfare, but God wants to make sure that we're always committed 100% to his teachings, his message of salvation, so that we always have something for an eternal retirement, because that's going to last a lot longer than any, one, any amount that our finances will be having on this world. And if we're blessed to be able to live a long time, those finances may eventually run out here in this world too. And so we need God's help to keep our eyes focused on what is the one thing needful? What is the greatest treasure? In our Old Testament lesson, we have the example of an individual who was specifically told, as all of God's people were told, that everything in the city of Jericho was to be destroyed, devoted to the Lord, given to God's glory, and not meant for personal gain or personal wealth. But his eye was distracted. 
and he saw that robe, he saw the silver, and he saw the gold. And even though he knew it was wrong, he took it. And he continued to know that it was wrong because he hid it. And then it was revealed to the Lord as the people of Israel went out to their very next battle and were defeated by an enemy that they should have totally overrun. And Moses realized as he asked the Lord that something was wrong. Someone in the camp disobeyed the Lord in a very specific way. The search for material possessions. They found out who it was. They went through a series of uh, challenges, so to speak, of figuring out which big tribe, which family, and it kept narrowing, narrowing down until they finally said, it's from this family and it's this individual, and they called him out by name, and that was the person. One out of all of God's people who had disobeyed at this time, right when they were entering into the promised land. Certainly the major goal of the Israelite people was to get out of slavery and get to the promised land. And right as he got in, he was consumed by the things of this world. God doesn't want us to get to the brink of the promised land because our promised land is not a different earthly location here in this world. Our promised land is always going to be heaven itself. And our Heavenly Father wants to remind us that that needs to be our goal. When the rich man came to talk to Jesus in the gospel lesson, he wanted to follow Jesus and he thought that he was doing a good job of doing that because he convinced himself that he was actually keeping the commandments. And yet Jesus, in his question to him, got to the very heart of what he really loved and what was really most important to him, and that was his material possessions and his material wealth. And when the people heard that pronouncement that this man, because of his wealth, couldn't enter God's kingdom, they all were very scared and realized that's something that all of us have to deal with. And yet Jesus' next words were, what is impossible for people is possible for God. And God has worked out that salvation for us in his son, Jesus Christ. And as we trust in him, we know that he will always be there with us. In these last couple Sundays of the church year, where we do focus on the end times and then prepare for the coming of Jesus in the season of Advent and his, his birth at Christmas, we're just constantly reminded that we are in a circle of life and death. And we want to make sure that that circle of life and death does not end in the grave and in damnation, but in eternal life. Because this world will be destroyed and recreated, and God will bring us to his heaven. Amen. Please stand. We continue now with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the responsive prayer of the church. <laughs> Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. 
you have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, sea and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed. And comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessings to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is up on the board.
Good morning again. I have the microphone underneath the mask, so it's different. I'm very glad to be back again. It was a very challenging two weeks of being right next door, but not able to come over. So it is a privilege to be back. Robin cannot be here this morning. She found out on Friday that she was in the classroom for one day in the past week with a student that came down with the coronavirus on Tuesday. So she got a call on Friday that says you've got 14 days of quarantine. And if she's under quarantine, I'm in the basement. So we're, we're kind of trying to work through that. So that number one, she doesn't get anything. I don't get anything. We don't want anyone to get this. So I'm going to kind of really keep my distance until she gets her test next week to give us an idea of how she's doing. She gets out of quarantine Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. And then our son in Kansas will have to figure out if he wants to come up or not because he's working in the hospital with all kinds of um, COVID patients. So we'll deal with that when we get there on that day. So remember her. The sign-up sheet for the Christmas Eve service. We are trying to be very careful about how many people that we have in the church. Right now, this seems like we're right at the, the best spacing and the best number. And with having two services, the um, having over 100 people in two services, we should be able to have everyone in church who wants to be in church on Christmas Eve. We're going to record the kids' program on December, on a Sunday right before uh, Christmas. I think it might be the 21st or 22nd. We're going to record that here at church, and then that will be played as a part of the 3 o'clock service, and then God willing, the kids will be able to do the 4.30 service, and that will be for family members first. So I haven't put up that sign-up sheet until we know for sure family and extended family of everyone that's participating in that service, and then whatever room that is left, left will be certainly open for people to come to be here. So we want you to be able to invite family and friends. We also want to be very safe and careful about that. We're looking into ways in which we can um, video our service in the basement. And that's going to be a challenge. you got to get the right wires, camera, uh, and the TV to be able to do that. But that's something that we're working on now. Thank you all for being here today. I greet you from here. Have a blessed day.